Let the rhythm take up Say so 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 Say So TV Show, a variality TV with an inspirational spin. Welcome, everyone. This is the Say So to Grow segment of the Say So TV Show, where we discuss various topics with interesting people doing unique things in the Christian community. I'm your host, David Santiago, and we are here today with the beautiful Alita Canty Lane, executive producer and creator of the Say So Show. Our interview is very special, a special one today, everybody, because we are celebrating our one year anniversary of its conception. Welcome, Alita. Hello, hello, thank you so much, David. I'm so happy to be here, y'all. Anybody who know me know I'm celebrating it, whether it's all by myself or with everybody. Come on and celebrate with me. I'm so excited to be here today. Hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Hey, so let's start with the What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Shell T. Hey, Say So TV. Happy anniversary. I came over here to let you guys know that I am super proud of what you guys are doing. And I want to thank you for letting me be a part of Say So TV show. You guys, um, since I've been on the show, things have been amazing. Things have been just moving and, and, and grooving. I have a lot of projects that are happening that are under my belt, they're under wraps right now, but I can't wait to share it with you guys. Say Cell TV from the bottom of my heart, I want you guys to continue to keep pressing and to keep moving. Keep doing what God has called you to do because let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And that's what you guys do on the Say So TV show. Happy anniversary. This is your girl, Shell T and I'm out. It's been a rough, tough year, of course, because of the pandemic and um, some other things we've been dealing with as a community. Um, but we've made it through. We're here. And we're looking forward to the next 10, 20 years and success of this show. So, Alita, let's talk about this show and the growth and, and your growth into this journey. Wow. Where do I begin? Okay. Um, uh, the last uh, The last time that we had a sit down and interview. It was the very first initial show of Say So TV show. Right. And, um, and you interviewed me and, and shared a little bit about uh, my upbringing, uh, my past, and as well as uh, the different uh, things that I envisioned, imagined to envision for Say So TV show. And looking back over this, that show, if you revisit that show, we have aired just about every last thing that I quoted that Say So TV show will have, and some. And I'm so ecstatic about the growth. Uh, I had to learn how to, uh, the whole understanding of, of a TV show, I had to learn how to network and 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 talk to people and they interact with people on on a different level than just hey girl how you doing or what's up bro and it was it's a beautiful experience beautiful growth me personally as well as the business uh tv show say so tv show yes uh, absolutely hey, so. let's go take i am alita canty lane I am the CEO of Say So TV Show. It is a variety TV show with an inspirational spin so that at any given time you can check on and click to see game shows, tutorials, teachings, DIYs and preachings, comedy and so much more. Say So TV Show is the only show of its kind. There is not a show like it anywhere. We at Say So TV Show believe in allowing the redeemed of the Lord to say so. Say so. Hello, greetings, God's people. 
This is Apostle Wisdom Eden Kusabo from Ghana, Accra. Shout out to Say So TV, and I recommend everybody to view and to watch Say So TV. Check it out on Kingdom Purpose TV. Say So TV, remain a bliss. Angela Tyler from Greater Works Ministry. Please tune in to Say So TV Show at KingdomPurposeTV.com. Say so. Let the rhythm take There's um challenges and everything when there's a process. And one of the things I wanted to touch on because you were in that uh in that area, you became, as I could see, because um uh, we've we've grown together in this is you become more comfortable in front of the camera uh, doing interviews and also <laughs> and also dealing with a multitude of people. How did, yeah, how, how did you just, what did you, you know, what did, what was the revelation when you just, you just came to and decided to say, you know what, let me just go for this. Well, I've learned, I've always been a pretty tough kid and but there was always that that person that taught you how to tap out, just simply tap out. Right. You tap out, you can get out of that, that hole, that position, that place. And I've learned not to necessarily tap out to people, but tap out to the purpose and plan of God. Now, see, I thought Say So TV show was a platform that was going to be used for one thing. I had one understanding about it. But going through the process of uh, running Say So TV show, uh, establishing shows to air, contacting the different guests, interacting, yeah, I had to learn how to, uh, as Paul would say, a base and a bow, whatever state I'm in, you know, what I had to become all things to all people to win some souls, you know, and, and I. And I tell you, it was a very grow, humbling and very growing um, position place in my life. Not only did I have to grow emotionally, mentally, spiritually, but even in hell, I, all at once, all at once, and, and still supposed to do it with a smile on your face and you better not drop the ball. Wow. You know? <laughs> So, so I, I, so I, I will humbly take say so right now. Anyone who I ruffled feathers, love you. Forgive me if you understood the story. You understand how I get the glory, but but you actually be proud of me because I made it. And I apologize. I love y'all. Okay. All right. Hi, this is Tara Lewis Reed. I'm from Bowie, Maryland, and I watch Say So TV show, and you should too. Jolanda Bell. I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, and I'd like to send a shout out to the Say So TV show on KingdomPurposeTV.com. No, my name is Jason from Virginia. Make sure you watch Say So on KingdomPurpose.com.
just really need to focus on us and God. You know, all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be the way God created it. God, family. Right? Not God, church, family. Uh-oh. I'm going to get in trouble with some people. But that's not how God created it. He created it. was God. The first covenant he created, the first thing he created was man and family. And that's what God wants. And that's why it's so hard for us to find um, or to receive what God wants for us because we have so many other people in the mix. Hi, I'm Despina. And I'm Otis. And we are... Love. We wanted to take this moment to wish Alita Canty Lane and the staff of the Say So TV show a happy, happy anniversary. That's right. You're celebrating one year and the Cuffies are honored to have been on your show twice in that year. Yeah. So we are celebrating you in such a wonderful way because we know the value that your show adds to so many lives. Well, you asked what's been up with the Cuffies. Well, Mr. Cuffy. Well, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've been publishing books, helping others' uh, dreams to come true. And we recently published a book by two incarcerated inmates um, currently, and they wrote a beautiful, powerful, powerful. inspirational book called That's right. <laughs> Beloved, God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. We want to encourage you to support this endeavor, support this book written by Stacey Davis and Alan Parker, along with myself, offering a weekly pivotal point commentary. We want you to support this book because it's going to bless someone's life and it will help these young men to support their families until they return home. Yeah. You can reach us to get this book at Despico, Destiny Center at gmail.com. Well, until the next time that we see you, we wanted to say one more time, okay. happy that's right. We forgot. We've got to say this. A, a cup, cup of coffee, love. love. A, a cup, cup of coffee. Oh, a cup, cup of coffee. Love. love. Take that a sip. Take that a sip. Take that a sip. A cup of coffee. <laughs> love. Well, as you can see, it's been a long time. But again, say so, TV show. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary. Please welcome back authors of Cup of Cuffy Love, Otis and Apostle Despina Cuffy. Welcome Woo back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much uh, for inviting us back to the Say So TV show for the Say So to Grow segment. We're excited. We're happy to know we're your favorite couple. Yes. Mm. But just in case you forgot who we are, let's uh -oh. remind them, babe. You ready? Go ahead. One, a two, a three. Cup of coffee, love. A cup of coffee, love. Take a sip. A cup of coffee, love. Take that a sip. Take that a sip. Take that a sip. Cup of coffee, love. I like that, David. I need one of your cups. <laughs> got your cup. That's right. I got my cup. He's got his yeah. water. We're excited to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, the pandemic is stopping me from actually getting that cut from you guys. Speaking <laughs> of pandemic, what you guys been up to since the pandemic? What's oh new? Oh, my. Mm. Well, go ahead, baby. Well, with the pandemic happening, we are a couple that's, uh, we're seasoned. We're a little up there. So we have the privilege of um, being, so I guess, they re retired from working a secular jobs. And so we love to travel. But unfortunately, with the pandemic, all of our travel attempts have ceased. I mm. mean, our cruise got, got canceled time and again. We were scheduled to go on the biggest boat they had available. Um, and then we had a trip to Vegas that was planned for my 55th birthday, which just passed by, David. 55 oh. and alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so no the, way. So, I mean, the pandemic has for us, you know, it's caused us to have to, um, you know, cancel a lot of our travel plans, but I wouldn't say that uh, we've been greatly affected by it. However, as you get into some of your questions about being home all the time with each other, I'm sure we'll be able to help somebody out. <laughs> because you can bump it. <laughs> you about to give it all away? <laughs> I'm sure the new dynamics is challenging to a lot of couples. And uh, they got to, uh, you know, kind of figure things out. But of course, couples that been, you know, been together for a little while, like your, like you guys, uh, you probably can give us some advice. How would you advise them on how to deal with being in maybe such close proximity of each other more often than not? <laughs> Find some creative things to do. Find creative things to do. Uh, share a lot more play a lot more different games. You know, you can, you can sit down and uh, play card games or uh, uh, regular, uh, uh, what's that one game, baby? Pequino. Pequino. Taboo. Taboo or any of those type yeah. games, which is a lot of fun. And there's, there's still a lot of activity, you know, yeah. going on with that. Um, but I would say as far as dealing with some of the challenges of being in close proximity, because a lot of people are working from home now. Um, they're having right. to have to, they're being made to spend more time with each other. And sometimes you find out a lot of things about each other, or you have to address things that you really avoided, um, yes. you know, and passing each other in the day. So you avoid a lot of things, but being together all the time, which we were before then, but because like I said, we don't have to work a secular job, but not having that outlet to do things, you know, sometimes can be frustrating. And so we've developed this thing um, where I share with Mr. Cuffey, you know what, you know, you're not wrong and I'm not wrong. It's just that we're different. And yes. you have to understand that about each other to the younger couples, to all the couples out there. When you get on each other's nerves because you have those little pet peeves that you didn't have to deal with because you weren't in close proximity, you have to understand you are different. And that's what I tell myself to keep, because I'm the one that's spaz. I'm going to be honest. I'm the spaz. I don't spaz. <laughs> He's the chill. I'm yeah, the spaz. Just, and he'll be like, all right now. <laughs> yep, all right, just mean it. <laughs> but you just, just have to, you know, say to yourself, you know what? And I do this all the time. You know what? We're just different. Yeah. And you married, the, why, you didn't marry yourself. So, right. <laughs> so uh, that's how we've been dealing with uh, being together in yes. the pandemic and mm -hmm. facing all the trials of just silence. <laughs> really? but and the, watching a lot of TV. Yeah, watch a lot of TV <laughs> series and things. Uh, and reading scriptures and stuff yes. too. Yeah, more of, time to fellowship. Time and dedicating fellowship in, yeah. in that arena as for, and uh, you can't really go out that much to eat. So therefore, there's a lot more cooking going on in the, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means there's, there's been a lot of uh, nutritious meals uh, being cooked and everything rather than being out at Chick-fil-A all the time <laughs> or the other little restaurants <laughs> five days and all of this, you know. Yeah, we had to that's, take a Chick-fil-A to that's, 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 that's a cut back there. So that means the pounds came off a little bit, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. A little bit exercise in around the house, you know, different exercises you can do without even being outside and things like that. But all those things keeps the marriage going. Mm -hmm. Open line of communication is yes. the best thing. Yes. To have that, you being that close proximity, mm -hmm. being able to have that open communication. Yeah. Uh, being able to talk things out and, uh, you know, not get hot, flustered headed on everything. 
But also, too, I think if you're angry about something, you should be able to sit down and say, hey, I'm angry or I'm upset. I am quick to tell my husband, you offended me. You know, if he said That's something, true. you know, know quick. if he said something that I think he didn't realize how he said it, because it's never what you say, but how you say it. And so sometimes, like I always say, because he's, mili he's prior military 32 years, sometimes he has that military authoritative tone. Now, I don't talk about my past, but having come from a marriage where abuse, physical abuse was involved, I'll tell him, hey, you need to shift that tone, babe, you know, or I didn't like that. So you do have to, like you said, communicate and let each other know what your expectations are. You know, you just can't expect a person to read your mind. That's true. You That's know, true. you got to speak up. I think that for couples, when you're, when you're getting married, it's, it's better. <sighs> okay. All right. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put a damper on anybody's party, but it's better if you can wait to have sex until you're married, because sex is a very elusive and deceiving um, uh, uh, emotion. When you have sex before marriage, you get so intertwined together. And I don't mean just physically, I mean, uh, physiologically, emotionally, psychologically, that when things don't go well, it's very damaging to the marriage. But if you're able to wait and get to know each other and build one another and have patience with one another, understand the things you don't like about each other so that as you go into the marriage, um, you don't need sex as your, um, your a wild card. You don't need sex as your wild card. You're growing in love. And that's what I'm thankful about with us is that we had the patience. Well, for him, he, he, you know, he was instantly in love, but I had the patience to grow more and more each day in love with him. And I'll tell you right now, if any, I'm about to say it like this, if any female get in my huggy bear's face, <laughs> This ponytail is coming off, and we're going to throw down. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh, my, my point of view on it uh, that I would tell those that out there is that never go to bed angry with each other if you're married. And if you're single, never part ways angry with each other or mad. Come to some type of agreement. Talk about it. Believe peacefully. Even for those that are married, uh, if there's a uh, uh, this, this thing that's going on, disagreement, or disagreement something. talk about it, but don't go to bed mad with each other. Because one thing you got to realize, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So you wouldn't want to lay down and wake up the next morning and your, your, your partner is going on the glory and you there, but y'all went to bed mad with each other and you never got a chance to tell them, I love you again mm -hmm. so that can be very detrimental to you mentally but you talk talk things over mm -hmm. don't go to bed mad with each other don't go away from each other angry mm -hmm. go away from each other in love mm -hmm. and peace and unity mm -hmm. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what it seems like, hey, you are love. No matter what it looks like, no, no matter what it feels like, no matter what it seems like, hey, you are loved. Hey, Alita, how you doing, my love? I do want to send a shout out. Um, to my girl Alita to say so TV show a uh, year of anniversary oh lord I thank God and hopefully soon that disciple Collins will be airing on her show 
my friend girl. She's been a year. I want to say I want to send a shout out to them for a happy anniversary. And I hope that you say see many, many more. I hope it be prosperous in the name of Jesus. That is my sister Alita, you guys. And I am so excited for her show this morning. Amen. And hopefully you'll be seeing this disciple Collins Aaron on her. Check her page out, you guys. Amen. And I just love her so much. She's grown to be a very strong person in my life. So I do want to thank God for Say So TV show. Alita. I'll never, oh, never know. Never let go of your hand. Oh, 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 Jean, I'll never, never, never know. Never let go of your hand. Cause if we, if we let go, of God's hand, oh, we may not make it to the promised land. Oh, Jesus, I'll, I'll never let go. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I will never let go. Never let Just read, read beyond the break. Beyond the break. Hold on, hold on. Don't let go. Don't let go. Oh, read, read beyond the break. Beyond the break. Hold on, hold on. And don't let go. Don't let go. Tell them, hold on, hold on. Oh, y'all tell them. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Through the storm and rain. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Heart and pain. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus, what's the name? Jesus, what's the name? Jesus, what's the name? Jesus, he soothes all of our sorrow. Jesus, give us hope Jesus, for tomorrow. Jesus, and when we need him, need him who he was. Jesus, when we need him, need him who he oh, was. Jesus, when we need a sister, need a sister who he was. Jesus, when we need a brother, need a brother who he was. Jesus, it was Jesus, 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 it was Jesus, Jesus nobody but Jesus, Jesus and just because Jesus, he been so good, Jesus, can we tell Jesus, how we tell him, Jesus, say yes, 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 you've been good, you've been good. Yeah. yeah, you've been good, you've been good. oh yeah. yeah, you've been good, you've been good. oh yeah. yeah. You've been good, 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 Jesus. We never, oh, never know, never let go of your hand. No matter what come our way, y'all, we told him we will, uh, we'll never let go. Never let go of your hand. Cause he
You have been live under the city lights, Donna and Butler behind the camera, Ron and the Louisiana girls in front of the camera. We thank you all so very much. I'll tell y'all a little secret real quick. I know it's recording, but I'm going to tell y'all something. One of the big names, I mean stars, actually asked me <laughs> when I, I approached them, asked me how many followers do you have? I said, well, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, well, you got way more than we do. We just, we ain't even, we celebrating the year. You got way more than us, but I'm, I, we, the people love you. So <laughs> celebrate with us, celebrate you, you know what I mean? And so with that, I bless God because they're willing to sh show favor where they would have charged us. They will not charge us. And they're going to use their platform to bless other people. So I, God is doing something. Y'all watch and see. Hey, so let's start with Father, we thank you right now for your anointing. Give us clarity today. Allow us to speak to the wounds of the people that may be hurting, people who may be confused. Give us clarity. Never let us speak out of ourselves, but only out of your spirit. God, allow this truth to rest in a place in them that brings about transformation. Lord, do not allow this particular uh, ministry to be a place where people become critical of one another, but let it become a place where we become healthy for one another. God, allow this to bring good fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we bless you, Lord. We ask you the Holy Spirit to take control of the atmosphere and let it be conducive for learning and for growing god we thank you lord for this while we know that many times you chastise us because you love us so if the word comes as a form of chastisement let us feel your loving kindness and your tender mercies yes, so that we can accept the adjustments that we need to make to line up to your design marriage is a covenant that you put together it's your first covenant that you established and you said yes, unto sir. them be fruitful multiply and replenish so we thank you lord holy spirit we're listening wisdom we do nothing without you speak to us this evening concerning relationships and covenant couples and god we bless you for every couple that is on for every relationship that is pending every relationship that is mm -hmm. maybe be in a in a state of wilderness and don't know what to do give them clarity god it's, there may be some who are in a very tight spot right now there's some tension god bring peace the pass of all understanding. And God, we turn this ministry over to you and we ask you to have your way with it. And at the end of the day, we want to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes, We've taken responsibility of the things you have put in us and we bless you for it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. We learned from the Jenkins how to be good steward of our finances. I'm trying to take y'all, go back to Say So TV show. Watch those TV shows. Watch those TV shows that's already been recorded and watch the ones that's coming. Hey, so let's start with the We got to have community gardens. Part number two, we got to have community gardens. What is a community garden? It's, it's a place where people can go and see how things grow spiritually, naturally, and physically. Now, I believe that and this is where God laid on my heart. And I know this is to be true. We got to start buying land, fence it off, and start growing our own tomatoes, our own greens. Next year, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with watermelons. My grandmother had a watermelon patch. My family, my generation, this is on my mother's side. My mother is a brown. I'm a Jenkins on my dad's side. My mother made name was Brown. The Brown family owns land. I have land in my name now. We were landowners because my great, great, great grandmother, she died at 107 years old. She was, she raised slave kids. And because she showed so, I mean, showed so much love because she was raised in the slavery time. She, she died 107. So she was doing the slavery time. Those kids become to love her. They see her as mother more than they see their mother. This is very common. And in, 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 in you watch that movie, Help, you'll see that. Where a lot of African-American people, they raise these uh, white kids. This is putting what it is, okay? And they raise them. And because of that, these kids love my great-great-grandmother, so they left her land. So when my grandmother did, Great 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 grandmother died. Uh, she had a hundred acres of land, maybe even more. 
100 acres of land. And so it was distributed to all the children, the grandchildren, and the great children to build houses on. And so, but I remember as a child in the summertime, we would go see my great great grandmother. And she had a Wallerman and patch. And we little kids, it's kids be, they be bad. Uh, I would used to run outside early in the morning and go crack. I used to crack the Wallerman up, put it in my face, and then go to the next Wallerman. Because I because I lived in 113 West Dewey in Youngstown, Ohio. This was in South Carolina. Uh, my, my family on the brown side, they're from the South Carolina area. And so I couldn't believe that there was Wallerman outside. We used to wake up to the to the rooster. And that's how you woke up in the morning. And so the sunlight come. And so she would go out and get eggs and come in and put them on the stand and cook us eggs from straight out the chicken. I had never seen no stuff like that. Right. And so I used to be so happy that there was Wallermans out there. I would cut the Wallerman, kick my hand, crack it. Throw it on my face and go to the next wallet. I can go through my five or six wallet minutes, come back with red stuff all over my face as a little boy. I was so excited. But that did something to my spirit. And so the other day when we was with Sister uh, Sandra Bridges, her husband says, well, you know, you can plant watermelons. I said, oh, that's what I'm going to do, because I know we need a community garden. Now, I'm doing it from my personal needs, and I'm hoping that from me spreading this particular teaching that you begin to grow. You have land. If you don't have land right now because of COVID-19, it's the best time to buy buildings. It's the best time to buy land because things are so cheap. Okay, they're so cheap right now because of what people not working, uh, they're not able to sell different things like that. So, if you already financially blessed, buy some land and start building a community garden. Now, all churches to me, all ministries should have a community garden where a place where we grow our own food. Watch this, a place that we grow our own food. Why? So when a pandemic come, I don't care what kind of pandemic come, we don't have to worry about you. Uh, they're only going to give you two tomatoes at Walmart. You only can buy three of this. No, because we have our own garden. We have a community garden. And all those who are tied to the ministry and all those that are in the community, you don't have to bow. Watch this. You don't have to bow to the market of the beast. Why? Because we are in position that you don't have to take that. See, the Bible talks about in that last time that you have have to take the mark of the beast because you're not going to be able to buy food. You know what? That was not supposed to be an absolute. That was supposed to wake us up. That if we are in ownership, what that is saying is that the church is not going to be in position Watch this, to be in ownership so the government go control everything. This is why you have one strong gas company most of the time in your city. You have one strong electric company in your city. Why is that? The merging of these companies is so that they can have total control. Total control, one world order. But if the kingdom, one world order, does, does not abort the kingdom of God, if the kingdom is being placed and we are doing what we call to do, we don't need the world to tell us, let's you take the market of beast, you can't have tomatoes. Man, I got tomatoes. I got 30 acres of land full of tomatoes, greens, corn, black eyed peas, watermelons, all kind of stuff because I built a community garden. Oh, I'm preaching right now. When did you do it? God blessed us 20 years ago. We heard a message, what to do with the kingdom access, how to distribute kingdom money, and we've been building. I'm part of a ministry that teach me what to do outside of the building, teach me what to do with my money besides driving in another car that put me back in debt. No, we have a community garden. And not only a physical garden, but a spiritual garden where you come and you learn how to grow. You learn what was the first place that God put Adam in the garden. What was in that garden? Four rivers. What do those four rivers represent? They they represent four streams of income. Anytime you are in a blessed place, this the, the sign of that place being blessed is the rivers that flow through that garden. And you found that river. That river had gold in it. All kind of things was in that garden. All kind of rivers of Euphrates. You look at it. Look at it. It's blessed with so many things. There are four strings of income that come into the kingdom that support the livelihood. That's why Adam can replenish because things are growing here because it's connected to a financial expression of God. Ooh, it's some good stuff today, okay? We must, we must, we must have community gardens. Point number three, building kingdom wealthy mindsets. Point number three, Building kingdom wealthy mindset, not just building wealthy mindset. There's a lot of books on how to get rich, poor dad, 
rich dad, great books, great information. Everything that's informative is not in inspiration. So don't get confused between being inspired and being in, informed. There's a late, lot of great books that's, that cause you to be informed and they can motivate you, but you want inspiration that informs you. You want information that informs you, right? So I'm talking about building kingdom wealthy mindsets. We cannot keep having church. We can't go back to church and nobody comes out of that place with a kingdom wealthy mindset. Not, not come out of there wanting to control, wanting to build a bigger plantation, but learning how to be wealthy. When you come out of a service, when you sit under a man and woman of God who call themselves apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, you should come out of there with a wealthy mindset to tap into the potential that you have. This is what God did in Genesis chapter 1. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. That's a wealthy mindset. Have dominion. Dominion is a wealthy mindset. Uh, being a lender, a lender and not a borrower is a wealthy mindset. Knowing that you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed coming out, that's a wealthy mindset. Knowing that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed that's a wealthy mindset. Knowing that nothing shall come against me, I'm more than a conqueror, is a wealthy mindset. Knowing that all things work together for the good is a wealthy mindset. You ought to come out of that building. You should come under, underneath that anointing, knowing some things about who you are. I know my identity. This is my beloved son who are well pleased. And because he had a wealthy mindset, when temptations came, he can say, get behind me, Satan, because I'm wealthy. I don't need to turn the stone into bread. I don't need Need to, to, to get tricked by all the kingdoms of the world, and you're not going to help me kill myself at the temple because I'm wealthy. I'm a son. I know who I am. That's a wealthy mindset when you know your identity. That makes you wealthy. You're full of love, joy, peace. Quit wanting to speak in tongues because you don't want to love your neighbor. No, you want to be. You want to know the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness. Against there is no law. That's a wealthy mindset. Knowing how to budget is a wealthy mindset. Knowing just because you can get it don't mean you should get it. That's a wealthy mindset. To be able to look at something and say, I don't need it and don't feel bad because you couldn't get it or because you didn't get it because you know how to walk in maturity and not be led by the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's a wealthy mindset. And kingdom agenda shall always bring you how to build your mind that you don't just keep buying little Debbie cookies. Now you created little Rodney cookies. Now you got your own cookies because you become wealthy and you ain't just leaning on somebody else. But now you become who you call to be called. Oh, watch this. You not keep uh, thanking God for the apples on the tree. You talk, You take the seed out of you as an apple and you plant trees within yourself. I know you know how to build another man's ministry, but do you know how to build your own. Uh oh, this is a wealthy mindset that you can walk on your own, stand on your own, and still be connected to the body of Christ because we endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. But it don't mean for you to always be a slave and always have to depend upon the breast when God giving you teeth that you to meet up for yourself. Ooh, I'm preaching in this house. Building kingdom wealthy mindsets that we, we produce millionaires after millionaires that love God. And these millionaires, they pray, they fast, they speak in tongues, but they also build buildings, they own banks, they own malls, they own grocery stores, they got community, they got health care facility, they help the senior citizens, they help the elderly. That's a real religion, a pure religion is what are you doing for the elderly? What are you doing for the what are you doing for the homeless? If if you really want to know how to give God money. People say, you ought to bring your money to the Lord. You know how you bring your money to the Lord? He said, when you clothed the naked, you that's how you blessed me. When you fed the naked, that's how you fed me. They say, God, when was you naked? When was you hungry? He said, when you did it unto the least of them, you did it unto me. You really want to know how to give God money? God don't need no money. You can't put no money up in heaven. You can't put no $20 bill in God's hand, but you can put it in the hand of the young lady who don't have no shoes. You can't put that $50 bill in the hand of a man who don't know how you're going to get to work the next day. That's how you bless God. You bless God by blessing the people who are unfortunate at the time to not be able to see their means. You show them that God has already considered them. 
That's how you give to God. And when you did it unto the least of them, you did it unto me. Quit being fooled to think that you've got to always give it to some organization when you have not blessed the people. If the organization is not blessing the people, then you're sowing in bad ground. Oh, what makes a church have good ground? Good ground comes from how you are distributing, how you're distributing what God gave you. How well that it grows there and how well that it releases there. It's not good ground if none of the apples ever release the seed that's in them. That's called a selfish ground. Good ground, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Good ground is based upon release, not just growth. Not just growth. Plantations grow. Prisons grow. Poverty grow, but what's being released? Ooh, we teach the day. Tango. Let the rhythm take Hello, everyone. This is Sabrina Sine. I am about to walk in one love nutrition. Can you see it? About to serenade this beautiful place. Follow me. Hello, this is Sabrina Sine at One Love Nutrition. I'm here with my friends Nina and Nino Richardson, who owns this beautiful place. They have beautiful shakes and teas that would give you so much protein and energy. You have to come by vegetarian and vegan. So uh, come on by and get a healthy shake for your life. So I just want to serenade their place. I speak life over your business your homes and your families too. I speak life over one love nutrition and everything that concerns you. I speak life over your business, your homes and your families too. I speak life over one love nutrition and everything that concerns you. Watch God flourish your life. If you are his, he's on your side. Watch God flourish your life. If you are his, he's on your side. I speak life over your business, your homes and your families too. I speak life over one love nutrition. And everything that concerns you. So come by, get your shake, get your drink. And if you have a business, you want me to come serenade it? And I know there's going to be a praise report after this. God bless you. From the very beginning, I got so many um, responses concerning me starting a TV show, okay? And one of the responses was, if you ain't making no money, you ain't making sense. I said, true that, true that. that, that I mean, that's a hustle man mentality. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say nothing against a hustle man mentality. I understand the ball, I understand. I said, but this is one thing I found out though. I'm learning, it's better to have the experience. Experience. See, if you go in trying to make the money, then it all, it, it's all established because of money. Does it make sense? But if you go in doing it the right way, with the right heartbeat, with the right momentum, set the right foundation, then you can build on that. My oil will make me money. Oh, don't you see that it was predestined from the beginning for me. My oil will make me money as a time long ago by telling the vision through the opportunity to say so. My oil will make me money at the word of his command through the language of love and the willingness to exalt my fellow man. My oil will make me money 
with an attitude of gratitude. I agree, and I won't sway. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In us borrowed jars of clay. Silver and gold have I none. My oil will make me money. Hi, my name is Zedra Bailey, and the name of this form is called The Covenant. Forever grateful for the day you came into my life to stand before God and decree you're my husband and I'm your wife, to make this binding promise in front of our family, friends, and God, to vow to stand as one in the good times, even when things get hard, to leave the altar, to run on to see what our life will be, no matter what happens, honey, I got you and you got me. Oh, we're happy now. The sun is shining so bright. But can we hold on to this deed, to this promise when our day turns to night? Mama said that there will be days like this. Days when we don't want to be in the same room together, let alone kiss. So what do we do when the enemy comes in like a thief at night and tells us it don't take all that to be married? Go ahead and live your life. When the money is low and the bills are due, the communication stops. And you doing you. And sickness and burdens, it's all around. You won't even talk about it. Instead, just walk around with a frown. Return to your first love, the love that's so pure and true. The love of Christ that will never leave nor forsake you. See, it's more to marriage than just saying, I do. It's a binding promise, a decree that says our love will see us through. Because it's the love of Christ that carries the weight. So things will come up, but it cannot shake our faith. How can two walk together unless they agree? Agree to forgive, agree to communicate, agree to be patient and kind. Agree to pray, agree to fast. Agree to keep Christ first at all times. The covenant is where a husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church. If you keep that type of love, you can love through any type of hurt. A covenant is between you, your spouse, and God. Keep all others out. They're not allowed to play in your yard. Yes, it will rain. There will be mountains to climb, adversities to face. But being unified, you'll be covered by the blood and you'll be carried by grace. All it takes is one. God sent one son. There was one crucifixion. So stay as one flesh and watch God do the rest. The covenant. God bless you. The day after my birthday, I get a phone call, and it was an a invitation. It was an a open invitation. Hey, you interested in having a TV show? Now, that's not something I ever wanted. I mm -hmm. never thought about that. If, if you asked me, did you want to write some songs and be on the album somewhere? Yeah, that was me. Did you want to write a couple of plays or, or make games for people? That's me. That's me all day. But a TV show? Not I. But because of my willing heart, God took time to show me that he was my Abba Father, that I was so loved in him that I could love myself, that I might be able to love others. Thank you. Let the reading thank you. Here I am, Lord. I stand at the door in expectation, believing that you will do exceedingly and abundantly above what I may ask or think. Father, I ask that you would open the doors to financial freedom in my life. I ask for supernatural increase that causes me to be the lender and not the borrower. Bless me with financial abundance so that I may advance your kingdom to those who are in need. Grant me with the spirit of generosity 
so that I would have the grace to overcome any form of selfishness. Help me to deny the temptation to overindulge in pleasures and grant me the power to self-control so that your blessings doesn't become an idol. Give me wisdom and insight in all of the decisions that I make. Help me to become a good student so that you may be pleased in all of my choices. As you bless me financially, help me not to worship what's in your hand, but to worship what's in your heart. The love, kindness, forgiveness, patience, and favor that you have bestowed upon me. As I become accustomed to a financial flow, help me not to forget that you are the source of all of my resources. I apply James 1 and 17, that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. Father, I ask that you would open the windows of heaven and fill my treasure box until overflow. I receive this financial overflow by faith, and I declare that it is already done in heaven and about to be manifested on earth. Lord, prepare and position my mind, soul, and spirit to receive what you have already declared. Let the Happy anniversary to the Say So show, TV show. It's been a year. It's been great. Um, this is just the beginning. Like you said, this is our first year, and and we're here to celebrate that first year. And like I said, happy anniversary to everybody that's been with us, everybody that's been on the show and has done things to have this show have a successful year. So this has been a very full discussion with, of course, with Alita, Candy Lane, and myself. Thank you for your time, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Say So, the Grow segment of the Say So TV show. Until next time, I'm David Santiago. Peace. Let the rhythm take up, say so. Let the rhythm take up, say so.